<coughs> Welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for September the 11th. If we could have a roll call, please, to establish quorum. Peg Adamson. Here. Terry McClung. I'm here. Christy Kendrick. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. Mickey Schneider. Here. David Mitchell. Here. We have six. All right. If we could stand and have your pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Yes, ma'am. Could we take a moment of silence in remembrance of 9 11 before we start our meeting, please? Certainly. All right, we have. Thank you, Mickey. Uh, do we have any changes? Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding unfinished business, if, if, the, may, if the city attorney is still not here when we get to that, can we postpone it at that point? <coughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Give a second on the agenda. Uh, we hadn't really. Did I? Yeah. Terry moved to approve, and then Mickey. Did we? Oh. Do we have a second on the approving the agenda? Second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Okay. Are you going to add the... Discussion about the uh, injunction? Yeah, we get that down here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. All right, all those in favor, sing five for saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. Um, motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Any corrections, additions? Not all those in favor of the minutes that submitted, sing five for saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, we've got uh, a couple of things going through with our commission and stuff. But First off, we've got uh, Christy Kendricks has applied for a position on the Planning Commission. So, a motion to discuss, Mickey? We've got According to Ordinance Number 2179, this will be breaking our own laws. <coughs> Under Section 1, Subsection 13.04.2a. It says the commission shall be composed of seven members, of which no more than two shall hold any other municipal office or appointment except membership on the Board of Adjustment, Boza, which is part of planning, or a joint planning agency. Um, Susie Herman and Melissa, both of them sit on dual um, commissions. They sit on two different commissions. So we already have the two. It says if there are two members, who hold other municipal offices or appointments, and one of them may be a member of the city council. And I know when we worked on this, because I had brought this forward as to be a temporary position that did not get included, of course, that was the one meeting of the year that I missed. Um, it was supposed to be temporary until they had enough people on there, and only if there was going to be a problem with quorum. So if they had five people and you need four for a quorum, it would be if one person had to call in sick, I mean, so you wouldn't have a quorum. Um, that's not the case here. Plus, they left out the voting part that if you sit on council and planning and have a joint issue, you either vote on the issue on planning and not in council or the other way around. You can't vote both times one or the other and that got left off so we may have to revisit that anyway but in the meantime we've got two people who are already sitting on two positions David. I'd like to postpone this make a motion to postpone this <coughs> until we have an opportunity to to research that because I was on council when we discussed this and I remember the, the issue going on at the time was they didn't they were down to the point where they really almost didn't have a quorum to even vote. And, and we 
I, as I, my recollection of it at the time was that we, uh, we made a motion to uh, allow a commissioner to sit on the co com committee and we had discussion about the fact that, uh, as Mickey said, and she is correct, that, that, and I think we left it up to her, she could either not vote at planning or vote not vote at council, but she couldn't vote for an agenda topic that came through. Mickey stayed on planning for a long time because they didn't have a quorum and then finally she got off and then I almost think she went back on because they had some more problems or she stayed I, on I don't remember I no, I only had to go I've been on three times as a, yeah. as a commissioner I had to go back on once as a councilman right. after we did this right but, see, but I, they left out that voting part, and that was integral. You couldn't vote in both places. I still, I still thought that it was, it was we made that one person could still be a planning person. So I understand what Mickey's saying, but I, I don't recall it that way, and I, would, I, I have a concern. But I understand. I think we need to revisit. I well, really do. I think this is mostly off topic because it doesn't really matter what you discuss if it's not in the ordinance. It's, it's not there. The, what is in the ordinance? It says. If, if there are two members on the commission that hold other and other positions, then you cannot have you know you can't have more than two people on the commission who hold more than two positions or more than one position who hold two positions. Ms. Kendrick, may I ask what the ordinance number is again? Twenty one seventy nine. Okay. And that's the one that we we did at the time Mick, we put Mickey on. Or was, the, or was, was there another one? This so was under was uh, uh, Morris Paint, yes. Yeah. Morris Paint, so. Yeah, I think that was your first term. Okay. It was, I think so, too. It's been a yeah. long time. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I do think we need to revisit this and do some work on that. You had a motion. I don't think there was a second. Did I make? Did I actually make a motion? Right, no. The table. Oh. Did, did, oh, I made a motion to table. I'll withdraw. Okay. Um, yeah, I uh, I apologize. I didn't when I read this. Uh, I didn't see the part about the um, the appointment except for membership in the board of zone and board of adjustment or a joint planning agency. I guess Mr. Weaver. That's the exception. I'm well, that sure part that doesn't matter because if you're on planning, you're part of BOZA. Didn't, isn't there in, in our codes, isn't there a section on planning and the membership and everything? of the? There's there's something else besides there, there's this. There's a board of zoning enforcement. <coughs> And the, and, and the planning, and, and it talks about the membership and all that. And they're the same. Has that, was that changed or adapted? I see this one. It stays the same, and then this was an addendum to that? And this is I'm, separate. I'm, I'm, okay, the, the, the board of zoning did not matter, because if you're a planning commissioner, that's what you're part of. Mm -hmm. Susan Herman is on planning and... CAPC. CAPC. I was going to say chamber. And Melissa's on planning and HDC. That's your two people that have two commission seats. The question, though, is accept membership on the Board of Adjustment or Joint Planning Agency. What? Of which no more oh. to, than two shall hold any municipal office or appointment except member except member of Board of, joint, of Adjustment or Joint Planning Agency. If there are two members who hold other appointments or offices. Only one may be a member of the City Council. So I'm not sure what the exception does that mean. The, the language was put in there, the exception language, because the Board of Adjustment is a complete copy of the Planning Commission and otherwise it would present a code uh, conundrum that you could be on both the zoning and on the Planning Commission because you have all the members are duplicates. But does this mean that you there's still no more than two members? Still would be no more than two members. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is. Th that simply allows them to go ahead and set a zoning, uh, board of zoning. All right. So at this point, I guess we're going to have to withdraw your, your application. 
Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, we do have still have a vacancy on the CAPC in the hospital. Uh, we have a, under parts. We've got an application from Christian Super uh, in your package. I'd like to make a motion uh, to go ahead and approve Christian Super for this position. Yeah, get a no second. Objection. I'll second it. I'm sorry. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of uh, approving Christian Super for position five of Parks Commission, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Present. It's a five-one. Um, we've got a mid-year, and I don't know whether Virgil f is here or not. Not. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll get to Smitty in a minute. Uh, we've got an application from Jim Jordan on the Cemetery Commission. Uh, we make a motion to accept Jim Jordan for the cemetery. Second. Right. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, Smitty is here to give us a uh, Transit Department mid-year update. I uh, apologize for Virgil. I didn't give him a call to remind him so I'm sure he's uh, forgot about it and so take it away Smitty. Okay uh, just give you an update what's going on with transit this year. Uh, the spring started off kind of slow. Uh, we had a lot of rain. Whenever we have bad weather it doesn't do well for trolleys because people don't like to stand outside and wait for a trolley. Uh, about mid-June things started picking up to where July it's probably the best July we've had 10 years and August was also really good if you count the years where uh, Labor Day holiday wasn't in August it was actually all in September and September is is, is booming also uh, this past spring we took um, approximately well when the new trolley comes in which is supposed to be delivered tonight actually we have a new trolley coming in, plus the capital expenses. We spent about two hundred forty thousand dollars in federal funds. Eighty percent of that we provided, and that includes the trolley, which is being delivered. Another small trolley, which we love these small trolleys. They fit our town nicely. Uh, we did have some warranty issues that came back to the manufacturer. The manufacturer has been great dealing with the problems they actually came down got the vehicles took them back to Wisconsin where they were built and they're bringing them back um, but our capital expenses for this year are like I said when the trolley gets here it'll be done and uh, that year will be put away for next year I've requested capital expenses to um, put solar panels on our buildings uh, the mayor has talked about a solar panel uh, parking cover on Planter Hill I went to the state and they said why <laughs> why really why? really and they, they told me that that wouldn't be approved so I actually put panels on the buildings yes they will approve that so uh, we're doing that um, this past year we also put bike racks in all the trolleys if you notice those yeah, mm -hmm. those are great and those are working out really good uh, also improved our barn, our trolley barn and garage with new heat and air system, all of it using federal money. And also this next year I've requested funding for automated bus stop announcement system. This was recommended by the state to fulfill an ADA requirement. But with that, we could also sell advertising as they approach a stop of a restaurant or a hotel. They could buy advertising as it's pulling up to the stop, we'll tell the customers about the stop. So we're looking forward to that as another revenue stream for us. Awesome. Cool. Which, which is nice. <laughs> and um, But next year I'm not, not requesting uh, funding for another vehicle. Uh, we're pretty good with vehicles. They are aging out. What happens with those when they sit, hit a certain mileage, 
the feds say, okay, we no longer have an interest in this vehicle, and they stop recording on it until it comes time to sell it, and then they want 80% of the cost of the, of the sale. And uh, next year, we're, like I said, we're not going to buy another vehicle next year because we're pretty set. Everything's running really good. Uh, we have some good mechanics who are keeping them going. When a vehicle runs for eight, nine hours a day, you know, problems develop, and they get right in and fix them with no problems. Um, we've had two inspections this year. One was the Title VI, which is a combination of ADA, uh, limit, limited English proficiency facilities, and we uh, were compliant on everything on that. We had an inspection two weeks ago from the state as far as vehicles and buildings. Uh, the vehicles are all fine. We have some issues with some buildings that they want us to repair. One is going to be an issue. They want us to fix the siding on our trolley barn where for the last 20 years, vehicles have backed into them, <laughs> scraped them, and it, it's going to be an issue that we'll have to look at in the future as far as how to pay for that, if we can get federal funding for that. Our demand response service, which is a curb-to-curb -curb service, it's not the trolleys, it's the little white van you see running around. Uh, we experienced a really, uh, how to say it, a, a drop in that in 2015, 2016. And the reason was many of our uh, very consistent customers were passing away. Mm -hmm. And that happens with, with people who are of that age. Also, many are disabled, disabled, have health issues. They do pass away. So I did some advertising, and uh, for this 2017, the demand and response is up over 100%. To wow. the point where I had to hire another driver just to fulfill the need. I hired another person to do the office work to be a coordinator, basically, because that, that's all she does is take phone calls and make reservations and scheduling and putting the driver with the right vehicle and the right person, and it's quite a complicated task. So I dedicated one person for that. And I'm talking to the state about getting us another van. Although we hadn't requested funding, they say there are funds usually left over to where we can try and get another van because it, it really has exploded on us. I got right now three vans out all day long, and uh, that's a good problem to have. You know, I went to a conference this last, or two weeks ago, and learned we, uh, since we're federally funded, our drivers and dispatchers and mechanics are drug and alcohol tested. Uh, the federal government is trying to address the opioid epidemic in this country, where drivers beginning October will be tested for opioids. We'll expand the opioids to include oxycodone, hydrocodone, oxymorphone, all the all the odones, ocones, whatever you call them, mm -hmm. to include that. So if a driver is tested for oxycodone, he has to show a valid prescription for it, or he'll have a negative test, in which case I can't use it. And if he does have a, 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 a prescription for oxycodone, one of these powerful pain relievers, um, we are notified that he's a negative test, but with safety concerns, which we have to address with the physician when he should take this, this medicine. Because a lot of them are impairing drugs, they put you to sleep, they make you drowsy, and you shouldn't be driving a public transit conveyance in those cases. Does anybody else has any questions for me? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, thanks for the report, it's very interesting. I was curious about the uh, the rider, uh, the, the number of riders you have for the new small vans versus the, the I mean, uh, trolleys versus the bigger trolleys. A share ride or not the share ride, your regular trolley. Well, they, they the the trolleys, the buses, we change them out different routes, different uh -huh. days as we expect ridership. On a Saturday, you probably won't see the small trolleys because they're not big enough. Yeah, we have to put the bigger trolleys out. Do they look like the big trolleys? Mm -hmm. They okay. look like they little shrunk. They're 24 feet. Okay. But they look like a trolley. Awesome. And the drivers love them because they maneuver very well yeah. through the town. Okay. And, uh, but, you know, on busy, busy days, they're just not big enough. Yeah. We have to put the bigger trolleys back out. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, uh, the ridership midweek versus weekend, uh, 
Are you up weekends and down midweek, or is it across the board? Can you give me some information on that, please? Um, comparing midweek to weekends is like comparing apples and oranges. You know, weekends were busy because just that's that's the nature of the town. The weekends are busy, but comparing weekends to weekends, we're up, and uh, weekdays were also up. I do track uh, uh, revenue, fair revenue, and ridership weekdays as compared to weekends. <clears throat> so weekend to weekend, we don't compare weekend to weekday. We know weekends going to be a lot heavier ridership, but weekdays to weekdays, we're showing an increase in the weekdays. Would it be would would weekdays be twenty percent of the business or thirty percent of the business? I'd say it may be thirty forty percent. Weekdays, four weekdays compared to three days weekend. And another interesting thing that's uh, increased is our sales to businesses. We have a program where a business, a hotel, motel can buy our trolley tickets at a discount, resell them to their residents. I think there's one even one bed and breakfast town that buys our trolley passes and gives everybody a trolley pass as part of their their package. But this helps us in that it saves time for the driver boarding. The driver doesn't have to sell them a ticket. They already have a ticket they purchased from, from the business. It also helps the business. So they, get a little, they get 75 cents per ticket, give them an incentive to sell them. And I think with the parking issue downtown, that's part of the answer is park your car at your hotel and ride the trolley downtown. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get that out. And I think a lot of the hotel owners are really buying into that to where they're pushing the trolley tickets to their to their to their, uh, their guests, so they come down with the trolley and not try to park, especially on a Saturday. You might tell them also one of the things I got excited about is your new uh, trolley app. Yeah, we have a, a trolley app. It's not really an app, uh, but um, if you go to a trolley stop sign or get one of our maps, it has a QR code. Scan it, and it'll take you to a website that has a map of Eureka Springs and shows you where the trolleys are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had that 30-second update, which wasn't quite as good as we wanted it because by the time you see a trolley, it's about a minute behind. We worked with the company and finally got us five-second updates. So they're pretty much real-time. You can see the trolley where they are. Uh, compared to if you have a smartphone, you can put it to show you where you are and show a relation to the trolley so people know where they are in the town compared to the to a trolley. Because a lot of people, they look at a trop map of Eureka Springs and they say, okay, where are we on this map? Right. You know, they don't know that. And so that helps that also. Uh, we've looked into other public transportation agencies. They have, you know, a, a schedule minute by minute where the trolley is supposed to be at. That's impossible in this town <laughs> to do that. Yeah. The traffic and all that. So this helps us where the customer can know when to expect the trolley even more accurately than before. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's worked out really well. We've had good comments about it. People really use it. I can I go on I go onto a website and I can tell how many people have touched it. I can see where these people are from if they used their phone, where their ISP is was uh, recorded at, I can see where they're from. I type past that C A P C for their uh, demographics. So. That's cool. It's a good app. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Uh, public comments? Bob Jasinski, 46 Hillside. Uh, well, I'm going to finish up today on uh, what I was attempting to discuss uh, last time I was before you, and it had to do with uh, a complete and total ban on transient rentals or tourist lodging in R1, Victorian Residential. And this is also pertinent because I heard that planning uh, may be proposing a complete ban on uh, boarding houses, which basically uh, is, in a way, transient lodging. Uh, and it's defined as where you serve uh, meals and provide rooms to people. All right, and as some of you may recall, uh, several years ago, uh, the city passed Ordinance 2184, which states that it is a misdemeanor to rent property as a dwelling with any residential zone within the city of Re Eureka Springs for a period of 30 days or less. 
In addition to that, uh, you may also note the fact that the city has imposed a complete ban on tourist lodging in residential uh, R1. Now, my point of all this being that homeowners cannot rent to transients, that is tourists, in R1, not even for periods in excess of 30 days. For example, a homeowner in R1 cannot rent a room to a tourist who plans to stay for five or six weeks while training for a bike race. Likewise, a construction worker who needs a temporary place to stay for a few months would not be able to rent a room. Why? Because this would be considered renting to a transient or a transient rental, which is completely banned regardless of the period. Now, the problem in the city's restriction or with the city's restriction on rentals for more than 30 days, in my opinion, it violates the taking clause of the Fifth Amendment. Why? Because it constitutes an unduly harsh limitation on the use of one's property. And as I attempted to explain last month, it is for this reason that transient rentals for 30 days or more are permitted even in those jurisdictions which completely ban vacation rentals. And I cited the case, too, which is an example in that, and that was, of course, the City of Venice versus Gwen case, which discusses the Supreme Court decision in Penn Central Transportation Company versus New York. Now, and while on the subject of vacation rental, as some of you know, as of the first of the month, Airbnb began to collect uh, and remit uh, the tourist, 2% tourist tax for Bentonville. Uh, hopefully, Eureka will be next. Still, the fact remains that Airbnb accounts for less than half of all vacation rentals throughout the country and in Eureka. And as in the case with other laws, the problem here is lack of enforcement. Add to that the problem of identifying tax evaders. And add to that the complete and total absence of any laws governing vacation rentals. Of course, there is one law that does apply. Supposedly, they're supposed to have one parking space per unit. But then for downtown, they have none, especially along <coughs> Spring Street. Uh, okay, now one solution to the problem is identifying vacation rentals. And, uh, and I suggested requiring ads to include their license number. That way you could easily identify. Another one would be to hire a tracking company such as Home Compliance. Well, it looks like I'm out of time again. It's nice seeing you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Susan Savage, 46 Hillside Avenue. In response to an incident at an unlicensed wedding facility, the city is entertaining revisions to its current code that, in my opinion, will drive the law-abiding bed and breakfasts out of business. From what I've read and heard, the need to regulate weddings and receptions arose from a single incident a noisy wedding reception held at a private home, an unlicensed wedding venue, in response to two complaints about noise and parking, planning has, has proposed revisions to the code that they believe will help preserve the residential neighborhoods. Conspicuously absent is any fact finding to determine one, whether there is a reoccurring problem. Two, those responsible for the problem. And three, whether laws, existing laws, adequately address the so-called problem. The proposed revisions impose unnecessary and burdensome restrictions on duly licensed bed and breakfasts that host weddings and receptions in residential zones. For example, requiring a permit for a reception and other social gatherings lasting more than two hours, try telling a bride she has to wait 30 days for a permit. Worse yet, rather than offering legitimate protections to residential property owners, the proposed restrictions appear to serve a small and special group, specifically those who will benefit from the new restrictions that will drive their competitors out of business. Putting additional restrictions on licensed bed and breakfasts that host weddings and receptions will not just hurt tourism. The proposed restrictions will further reduce property values and worse yet, put hard working people 
people who have invested their time, their money, their en- energies in building a business and a life in Eureka Springs. And while it's understandable, the neighbors don't want loud noises next door and excessive traffic on their street, the fact remains that existing laws already exist to address these concerns. Existing, existing city ordinances that regulate noise, restriction on parking, limit occupancy, and otherwise ban public nuisances, diverting valuable resources to policing weddings and receptions will do little to nothing to improve neighborhoods. Okay, thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank Thank you. Okay, that, uh, that's it for the public hearing. So uh, next order of business will be new business. Get a motion to discuss moving business to the auditorium. So moved. Second. All right. <coughs> you know, we, we have discussed this at the last uh, or a while back, and recently it's also come to the mayor's office that, uh, you know, we need to go ahead and act on it. We've been looking at uh, other opinions and, and other options on through uh, where to go and, and what to do about this and at this point in time I'd like to go ahead and, and suggest that we move our meetings over to the auditorium I so move get a second, a second. You got any discussion yes ma'am I'm going to try to be polite I think it sucks For 20 years, this issue has been talked about, looked into, so on and so forth. We're probably the first council that's actually doing more than just spending, you know, several weeks of researching or looking around. We are actually doing. We are actually out there finding a place, planning on moving, and for 20 years of ignoring to finally have a council who's doing and then to treat them like that I think is very uncalled for and rude and disrespectful I think they should take into consideration that we are attempting I'm sorry I can't give you a five second thing on every five seconds we're going to do this we're going to do that I think that is ridiculous. We can't give you a five second schedule, no, but we have said we will have a definite thing by January the latest. I think it would behoove our people to give us a break and let us do the best we can because by moving to the auditorium, we will be helping one teeny tiny little bit of our citizenry and we're going to be hurting a huge amount because nobody really appreciates how many people watch this live presentation on council night at home. And it has nothing to do with being lazy or anything else. It's a matter of if you can watch it at home, it saves them time and trouble, it saves us time and trouble, it saves parking and everything else. They are going to lose the live broadcast and yes I know it will be taped and they can watch it in two days whatever point being we are working on it we have a goal that we are aiming for I just don't think it's very fair very nice or very right to not give us a chance to get there without twisting our arm and kicking us about it that's just my personal opinion Mr. Mitchell (coughs) I was nice. You were. I agreed to a fair amount of what Mickey said. Hang on. I really do. I, I understand where we're going. I understand it. I understand the legal. I got it. I got all of it. But you know, there was a lot of years, as Mickey pointed out, that nothing was done. We, we, we come into this issue. 
We start looking at it. Kim gets a ADA compliance committee going. They start researching it. They start looking at it. We just came from visiting two very interesting sites. We had already looked at potentially the community center. We had actually started actively looking. If you look at what we were doing, when we looked at these today, one of them, the fire station, probably could have been finished and ready to go by the end of the year. The other one, the office over on North Street, probably would have been ready by March. That, that is a timeline. So this urgency by two citizens in this community that is creating this emergency issue, I find disturbing. But we're going to go ahead and deal with it. Our, we're going to have a vote here in a minute anyway. But I, I still find it uh, disturbing. That's all I'm going to say. Right, any further discussion? All right. Uh, motion is that uh, we we'll go ahead and move the meetings to the auditorium. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. 4 2. All right, motion passes. Uh, we have an annual ordinance for uh, real and personal property tax that uh, is in your packet. Uh, this is a, uh, let's see, where am I here? Motion to discuss. Second. Thank you. Uh, this is our normal, um, uh, ordinance that we enact every year for this uh, nothing changes everything remains the same as far as all the uh, the figures and everything else uh, and it's something which is have to do so oh, mr. mr. McClellan yes uh, mr. mayor I would like to uh, Share. Okay. assign this ordinance a number and read it in the record uh, uh, on its first reading uh, and also just to mention that that uh, in, it's, it's standard operating procedure it's it's no big deal and so we'll probably without a without an emergency clause do three reading tonight and have it out of the way that's so I'll second okay so the amount in here is exactly what it's been before yes Yes, I'd like to point out also that it was the failure of the council in Cape Springs to pass this ordinance that caused such a huge problem for that city. So this is this is what's to be expected. I forgot how many hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not billion of dollars, of mm -hmm. revenue lost because they failed to pass this. And again, as as mentioned, nothing. This is the same ordinance that's been passed. Um, as yeah. long as I can remember. Yeah, every year since the beginning of time. Yeah. So, <laughs> any further discussion? Excuse me. All right. Uh, all those in favor of signing this in ordinance and reading it on first reading, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. The ordinance number will be 2258. An ordinance levying a tax on all real and personal property in the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Being ordained by the city council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that section one levy on personal property, the tax of 4.4 mills on the dollar is hereby levied on all personal property situated within the city limits of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, for the following purposes: general fund 0 0.0038 mills, two firemen's pension and relief fund 0 0.0006 mills. Section 2, levy on real property. The tax of 4.4 mills on the dollar is hereby levied on all real property situated within the corporate limits of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas for the following purposes. 1. General fund, 0 0.0038 mills. 2. Fireman's pension, excuse me, relief and pension fund, 0 0.0006 mills. Section 3, collections. The 4.4 mills above levied on the personal property are to be collected at the regular collection of taxes by the collector of Carroll County, Arkansas, at the same time and in the same manner that state and county taxes are collected in the year 2018. The 4.4 mills above 
levied on the real property are to be collected at the regular collection of taxes by the collector of the property of Arkansas at the same time and in the same manner that state and county taxes are collected in the year 2018. Mr. McConnell? I'd like to make a motion that we approve Ordinance 2258 on its first reading. Second. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor of approving Ordinance 2258 on its first reading, signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Mr. McClung? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, pro uh, propose that we uh, suspend the rules and read Ordinance number 2258 for its second reading by title only. Second. Any discussion? Snyder? Yes. David Mitchell? Yes. Terry McClung? Yes. Peg Adamson? Yes. Bob Thomas? Yes. Christy Kendrick? Yes. Six zero. Ordinance number 2258, an ordinance levying a tax on all real and personal property in the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Mr. McClung? Mr. Mayor, uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we approve ordinance number 2258 on the second reading. Second. Discussion? Is okay. All those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion that we suspend the rules and read ordinance number 2258 for its third and final reading by title only. Second. Discussion? Okay. Bob Thomas? Yes. Chairman Plum? Yes. Victor Snyder? Yes. Peg Adamson? Yes. David Mitchell? Yes. Christy Kendall? Yes. Six zero. Mr. McClellan? I'd like to make a motion we approve Ordinance 2258 on its third reading. Second. Okay. Now we do about Get dizzy. Roll call. <laughs> yeah. Kendrick? Yes. Peg Adamson? Yes. Bob Thomas? Yes. Uh, Mac, uh, Mickey Schneider? <laughs> yes. Terry McClellan? Yes. David Mitchell? Yes. Six zero. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Now we got that one out of the way. We don't have to worry about being like some cities in Arkansas. Uh, where are we here? Uh, all right. Motion to uh, discuss uh, site visits to meeting locations. So moved. Second. All right. We, uh, I'm not sure where to go on this. Uh, we did meet with uh, the council, went to 25 North Street, uh, and looked through those offices up there and recognized that we would have to have um, pretty it's significant uh, demolition work in through there, but it was set up uh, as offices and could could work uh, very easily for our facility up through there. Um, and um, also noted that there was a couple of other offices that are still up there that we could uh, utilize, plus a basement for storage and everything. Uh, the building is set up already as a um, clinic, doctor's clinic, um, and it was also noted too that uh, if we didn't utilize that facility that uh, the hospital had uh, was very interested in going ahead and renting that uh, for us, from us, uh, for doctor's offices without us having to do anything, any cost at all. And then we went down to downtown and looked at the downtown fire station uh, which is needing in comparison uh, a lot more uh, renovation work we'd have to clean out and whitewash the interior walls uh, replacing the ceiling cover putting in a new ceiling uh, upgrading the electrical installing a bathroom uh, installing air conditioning both places would require uh, 
cable run, the 25 North Street uh, would require quite an extensive cost to relocate the cable. Uh, when you look at both facilities, uh, they're pretty much within uh, $1,000 of each other, uh, moving from one to the other. Uh, when you're looking at comparing apples to apples. Uh, so the, uh, both facilities are owned by the city. Uh, and there's still, as I mentioned, maybe one other option on the table that I'm still pursuing, but I'm not sure we're going to get anywhere on it yet, but, uh, but it's still there, possible. So <coughs> if, uh, comments from the council, Mr. Mitchell? Yes, um, it was enjoyable to go and look at these facilities, and as far as the third option you're looking at, I think if we would consider tonight looking at one of these two at this time, that doesn't necessarily mean you couldn't bring a third option later. If we, if we at least focus on these two and eliminate one, would probably possibly be ideal if everybody agrees. If they don't, fine. But it would make sense to do that. As far as looking at North Street, it's, it's, a, it's a nice looking facility. It has a long term ability to provide the city of Eureka Springs with an excellent meeting space that has a small kitchenette available to it so you can have, at least have refreshments for meetings. Uh, it's a very nice environment, central air and heat. Uh, it has some office space, and the surprise is when you walk down those stairs and find that massive amount of space downstairs potentially used as either other offices and or uh, for storage. So the, the opportunities for the facility at Norris Street to, to make a very nice meeting facility and office space and storage space for the city certainly outweighs just renting the building uh, and for the small amount that it would bring bring in as income. That was my comment. Ms. Snyder? First a question and then a comment. Um, on the Norris Street, I'm not seeing any pricing for an ADA bathroom. Didn't you say we were going to have to... That's part of, part of the demolition and the rebuilding cost. Oh, okay that in there okay um since it already has existing well it had the bathroom yeah but it all we'd have to do is remove the, the tub and and put in a new doorway and do some remodeling work in there the fire station doesn't have a bathroom no we'd have it has plumbing plumbing is stubbed up but we'd have to construct and purchase oh, the, okay. the actual fixtures virtually start from scratch okay well with the exception that the, the water and sewer is there there okay. had been a bathroom at one point Okay. Um, both of them have their pluses. Right now, the fire station looks horrendous, but then again, what's that to be expected? Um, finished, it'll look awesome, where the North Street one already does look awesome. So I know a lot of people were turned off going, oh my God, look at this little garage, you know. When it's done, it's going to look good, or if it would get done, it would look good. So we can't go by that. So we are back to what I said at the last meeting, considering the people, because these prices come out to be virtually the same amount of expense to the city to set them up. They both will look very nice. They both will be great for the citizenry. So we have to look at the other part of it. Fire station is right here. It's downtown. It's got all this parking for our council meetings directly across the street from the courthouse. So things that are needed, you run across the street and you grab them. You don't have to do any driving, waste any gas or anything else. The people have plenty of places to park. They have trolleys they can take. They have all kinds of amenities. Um, the biggest thing is going to be the live broadcast. That, that is going to be one of the big things. And I want to make sure people understand, I have worked with handicapped people of all degrees for 50 years. So I know what deaf people go through. I know what blind people go through and crippled people. This was stuff I have done for 50 years. I know what, and I've been there a few times myself. I know what it's like. 
that's why to me looking at what will be the best setup for the people is so important and that's ease of availability parking sidewalks transit the whole nine yards that that's my biggest thing that's going to be my number one first concern is the availability and accessibility by the people of any condition that's the big thing we have a ton of people who prefer to stay home we need to have that live broadcast I know it leaves us open to all kinds of things but you know that's something we have done for eons both both facilities uh, are included for live broadcasting well yeah and the one we don't have to do hardly anything the other one we have to spend a ton of money to do it that bothers me but like I said the accessibility it, it, I'm, I'm bringing up that part about the live broadcast simply because I don't want us to forget we need to have live broadcast in Eureka we really do um, but like I said, accessibility, availability, that's the biggest thing for me. And since over the years when we've wanted to move out of the courthouse before, our biggest problem is the fact that this is a historic building. The fire station is historic, and you can stand right at that sidewalk and look at our historic courthouse. That's a plus. <laughs> that's it. Yes, ma'am. I, I can see both possibilities and possibly the third possibility um, and I kind of like the live broadcast too but I mean we don't ha we don't have to do it um, but the other thing that I'm looking at now are I feel like all the demo anything that you'd have to do in either of the places would would come out really nice and the the uh, the drawings for the front of the firehouse were just it's gorgeous, you know, and the inside would be this kind of nice historic, historically remodeled inside. But the other thing I'm looking at are, one of the things I have problems with is this table. <laughs> and I know that in the future that we'd have, you know, an, an arc of some sort or some kind of thing like that. And you have, you have room in here for uh, 900 bucks for our tables. And I'm just putting in a plug for some of the great craftsmen that we have in Eureka Springs to think up a design for an awesome looking uh, centerpiece for having city council meetings at. I think it would be just something to think about as, you know, as we go forward with this. So thank you and I appreciate uh, the work that was done on both of the, the drawings and the and the uh, the time t I don't know if there's a timetable on them. Is there a timetable for these? Well, we we need to. I think, as Mr. Mitchell said, you know, it'd probably be good to eliminate one, and we can focus on this one. And and if the third option works out, I can always bring that back. Uh, but at this point, uh, it would be able to allow us to start finalizing. Uh, because these are all, you know, they're preliminary guesstimates, cost estimates. Also, uh, as noted, the uh, downtown fire station is probably, we're applying for grants, uh, going to apply for a grant. This one, the downtown fire station, probably weighs better in getting the grant because it's a combination fire station, community meeting room. The North Street, it would be strictly meeting rooms. Uh, they're both eligible, but because the, the grant we're going after uh, likes, uh, they like to give money to fire stations. So this would kind of be. <laughs> and it's kicker. historic. Yeah. Mr. McClellan? Um, well, a couple things. One, one the, there is potential for a whole lot more up at North Street than just meeting rooms. We just got to figure out what would be the right fit for up there. But there's additional office space upstairs, could be some downstairs, and, and lots of good storage. So uh, there's a lot more potential there than just the meeting room. Um, the, the fire station, the location, better. I can't deny that. Uh, 
However, uh, you know, it's a fire station. It's going to continue to be used as a fire station. And you'll have, uh, you know, there'll be uh, the odors of fuel and things like that that could be offensive in there or exhaust. Um, so it, it, could, it could make it a difficult arrangement. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's another of my concerns there. I think I just, I think the building up at, by the hospital would serve us much better. Now, I also believe that, um, that we need to pick a date to uh, make a vote. And I don't know if, whether it's the next meeting or the first meeting in October, you know, I think, I think if we're going to get this close with it let's let's nail something down and, and I so I agree with that and so I, I make a well never mind I'll just let me, you're raising let me, your let finger me, there so you've let got let something me, you want to say let me ask so. a question is there a time limit on the grant no, not that I know. it's a middle okay what well, I just want to make sure there wasn't a time time element that okay so that that's the only reason I was yeah. Um, so, so I, sure. you know, if 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 at this moment I would like to make a motion, regardless that we that we we vote on a location, first meeting of October, whatever that date is. A second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Okay, discussion. On mo on setting the date for on that motion. How that long motion. before you could hear about our possible number three? I would probably know by then. Okay. I would think. Yeah, that's a month. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> Ms. What, what further information do we need before we make a decision? To me, it seems that we could make a decision today. Because we have a possible number uh, three. Yeah, Mickey, please, ma'am. <clears throat> Bob? Yes, yeah, if we're discussing it, I, I prefer David's plan to pick one of these two, and then if we come up with a third one, we could compare that. But I do have something to say about these two plans. Mm -hmm. but, okay, well, uh, of course, the, the motion is having it on, making a discussion on the first meeting in October, which is really a month, less than a month. This is the first meeting in September? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, um, so we're, we're literally... Uh, Meeting after next, we'd make a decision. We'd have a decision making. Well, the discussion is I'm suggesting that I prefer David's plan to pick one of these tonight compared to the third one. But okay. I, I also was not recognized in time to discuss I'm sorry. the benefits okay. of the I team. didn't see your hand. I just, I've been in situations with where the layouts were. If you look at the fire station, the restroom is behind the council table. That means anybody who has to get up to use the restroom has to come up and go behind council table and go into the restroom, and it, it's, it's just very disruptive because people literally sit there and, and time you to see how long you're in the restroom. It's just something people do. <laughs> I'll, I'll not wear my watch. I'll leave my watch at home. Well, I have one more comment on the only re the only reason we're having a bathroom is because it's by code. If we didn't need it, we wouldn't even put it in there. Did you see any of us most up most of the people here at the council, I mean, we do have our breaks. Yeah, right. And yeah. you know, then we all well, but this is for all meetings, not just council meetings. You know, That's, and, well, but and the, same, the same, the same, the same principle holds true. Well, people. I just can tell you, it's very distracting <laughs> when somebody goes behind the speaker and goes into the restroom. Oh, I understand. It also makes it very obvious exactly. of that person, especially <laughs> they're being, they're being filmed it. on live TV. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it may be a little bit of, of um, what's the word I want to say, um, keep him from doing it. <laughs> and to choose them. You can hold the other direction. direction. I would like to call yeah. the question yeah. on okay. when the time that we are going to make the decision. Right. Okay, we got it. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second it. All right. Just to, to get that motion out of the way okay. so we can go back and talk. All, all, all in favor. What's uh, the motion? Calling for the question. Oh. No. To ending discussion, calling the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. I still had a question. All right. Now we're okay. back to Terry's motion. Now we're back to Terry's motion. Mm -hmm. and could somebody repeat it? <laughs> <laughs> the motion was to vote at the first meeting in October and take second 
and where we still have that was the question we called. No, with question we called was yours. I didn't question. make a motion. I thought you made the question to stop talking so we could get to the motion. Oh, well, okay. So I'm okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, the, so the question is on Terry's. Okay. Uh, it's calling for the question, so we call for the vote on that. And so we got that out of the way. Now we're back to Terry's motion, and we still are under discussion. Do we still get to I discuss think we call that? I for, for call for the vote. We did. Mr. Turner. Okay. We called. Did you call for the question? Yeah. Yeah. That stopped it. Totally. Okay. Yeah. The, got it. Okay. So now we need to vote. Now we, now oh. we call for the vote. So, so read the motion. All, all <laughs> those in favor of um, deferring this and coming with salute, coming Putting the, all right, read the motion. <laughs> <laughs> to vote at the first meeting in October. There you go. Can we have a roll call? We can have a roll call. Thank you. Chair McClellan? Yes. Bob Thomas? No. Peg Adamson? No. Christy Kendrick? Yes. This is for voting on at the next meeting. Well, yes. The first meeting. Well, in, no, in, in, in October. October. That's what I meant. Yes. Okay. David Mitchell? No. 3 3. Yes. Mr. Four, three. Okay. So are we still discussing the space? No, it's gone. Now. Nope. That's it. You ended it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do we have uh, parks no, oh, we did. Sorry. and um, Justin and Bill here? Uh, before we went on, I wanted to uh, excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. The, the agenda topic is council and grants. I really would like to have the city attorney ask, answer questions that were raised last meeting. For well, we first we need to bring this up a motion to for a motion to discuss. Right. I, I move that we discuss uh, council and grants. Okay, we got a second. Second. I guess. Sure. All right. Now, yes, sir. Okay. Your question to the city attorney? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there were two questions with regards to the resolution <laughs> for grants. And I'm not talking about this specific <laughs> parks grant. I'm talking about grants. Because I went back and I looked at, we passed a resolution about writing a grant to uh, fix up whatever site we pick for council meetings. And that also included this statement that the mayor is authorized and directed to execute all appropriate agreements and contracts are necessary to expedite the construction of the above stated project. I didn't go back, but I'm assuming that's probably in most of our resolutions. For it's in a fair number. Isn't it? And so the question that I asked last week was, if we've passed a resolution and authorized the mayor to supervise the construction, and then you said, well, if, if the grant was given to parks, the mayor would have no part of it. And I guess if a grant was given to transit, the mayor would have no part of it. I, how, what is the point of having this statement in there? Typically, the statement is put in there because the grant will require someone to receive the grant mm -hmm. and to be, uh, at times, in charge of the actual uh, project that the grant is used for, mm -hmm. and that is used to be the contact person is typically the mayor. Often though, when the grants are written by the various departments and put through, or do various uh, commissions, those are then administered through the commission because the commission actually does the work. So but then, ultimately, the mayor is still the arbitrator because the mayor is the head of each department over the head of each department. So then, he is the chief executive officer of the city. So then, to use 
funds from a grant on a different project would require the mayor's approval? It depends on how the grant itself is written. I, you said that last week. I thought you were going to read the grant. <laughs> well, I could go back and look at every grant that we've applied for in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. and they would all be very different. Right. Some require the mayor to actually sign off on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the projects that was very intense for the mayor was 15, 16 years ago when we worked on the auditorium. One of the grants there required right. the mayor to almost be a, a general contractor. So um, then other grants don't require that close of supervision. They actually go to the, to the department that seeks them because the expertise should be in the department or the commission. So that would be, would that be then when, when someone writes a grant, they might say the mayor will supervise this grant implementation or they may write our department head will supervise this grant implementation. That's the way it is usually interpreted, yes. So then? We talked about uh, trying to get a grant a few years ago for, or a year or so ago for the transit, to build a new transit building. Mm -hmm. The mayor probably, in this instance, because we have a mayor as an expert in building, he, as an architect, he might have been more involved than most, but most mayors wouldn't have a lot of competency in going out there and constructing a building. Right. So they would more than likely have delegated that or the grant would have been written in such a manner that someone with some competence would know which corner to square and which one to round off, not the mayor. Well, I, I, then I, I would guess before we pass a resolution in the future, we would need to see the grant to see how it's written. You may want to do that. You may not want to do that. I mean. It depends on how intense you intend to supervise it yourself. Not it, myself, the mayor. Well, the council. Yeah. I mean, the council funds things, passes laws. Typically, the executive department runs the execution of those. Right. Ms. Kendricks? My greatest concern with these grant applications is the liability that the city may have in the event that the purpose of the grant fails for some reason. It, it, it could be a trail that is on private property and somehow no longer is used for a trail. And I recall very specifically with Resolution 691 that we worded it the way that we worded it so that it would come back to council to approve it, um, that, that the director of parks was permitted to apply for it, but that we would not sign a contract committing to it until the council approved. Because the big danger there is, as I recall, yes, it's $35,000, that the city, not the parks, Commission, but the city would be liable to pay back that money in the event that the trail at some point in the future was no longer used as a public trail, which is a possibility mm -hmm. under those circumstances. And I would have the same concern with diverting the purpose or diverting the use of the Dairy Hollow Trail to some other purpose without council looking it over and seeing what the consequences of the, the use of it may be and what that may mean to the city's bottom line. Mr. Mitchell. I agree with what Bob said and I, I understand it totally and I agree what Christy says that concern bothers me too about it but what I'm also concerned about is I thought Bob had, had, had was hoping that the our legal counsel sitting at the table was going to read the actual grant. And at this point, it sounds like that hasn't been done. So we really don't even know what's in that grant. But if we're on the hook for 35000 for something, money that's being shifted around, I, I do this have a concern. 85, oh, so 85, she said 35, well, I'm sorry. That was that was one of them is. Oh, one of them is. I do have a concern about it, and I, I, I really would have 
thought that the attorney would have not relied on all the grants we've had in the past to, to make a summation of the one that we're discussing. The reason I made the summation is because of the way Mr. Thomas just now phrased it, he wanted to know how it affected all grants, was my understanding. Well, if you want specifics as to this one, I'll give you specifics as to this one and what I think. I don't think the council is in liability on this one for the switch of the material. I think the way the grant is written, this one would provide to allow that, for one. Number two, the parks has its own revenue stream, which would be first tapped if their violation of the terms would be sufficient to cause a repayment of the grant. Mr. Mitchell. I, I picked up the concern, the concern that you think. I would hope that is, are you telling us that's your legal opinion based on reading the grant? That is my opinion. Reading when, the grant? When I say something that I think, I am simply being a cautious attorney. All attorneys are going to tell you what they think because there is no legal precedent at this point that has been established by a judge. No judge has yet been called to rule on any of these matters. Okay. And any time you enter into a courtroom, no matter how well you think your case is prepared, there is the possibility of loss. It may be one in a million, <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you. And so, in fact, one of the first things they tell you in law school is never make it something 100%. No, I agree with 100%. I still, I, I'm still... I'm giving still you my opinion from what I've seen. And I did see the grant earlier. You did see So now you did see it. Okay. I've seen Ms. Schneider. For Tim, is it possible at this point in time to get the school board who technically, and we're still arguing about that, who technically owns the community center property, to sign, go along with a contract that in the case of a failure of use of the, the community center or whatever, that the trail would stay there as a viable trail? They could not, like, close it down, remove it or anything? Is this um, a possibility? Well, this would be along the line of what you discussed when you uh, mixed the uh, previous grant. Uh, I don't think that the city or the uh, school was in favor of doing that at that time. But it or is a legal possibility. It is a possibility. They could do um, So they, they could just, we could just say, you know, just to make us feel better and the whole situation, would you be agreeable to sign a contract that if for whatever reason you take back the land, this trail stays as the trail that it was set up to be? So that is a legal possibility. Sure. Okay. You can you can I understand please. that Mr. Featherstone asked the school board that very question, and they uh, decided that they would not uh, do what is being, they, they would not go along. That's with that. not what I was asking. Mr. McClellan? Um, my question is, resolution number 691, the, the grant for 35000 was denied. Okay. And so then the resolution number 656, they're just wanting to just use that grant for the other. That's that's what that's what they have in mind. Uh, I mean, we went through the whole process of, of approving the one in Derry Hollow, uh, you know, and buying the land and trading it out and all that, and to have things go away. I mean, why why did it become second shelf, you know, and take I, second? I, Second I think position. I'm uh, not really sure I think of that history. I think we're getting a little sidetracked. Well, and I think the reason that the council, the motion, and what the agenda is to an update from Mr. Featherstone and the parks director to talk about this. Mm -hmm. I think maybe at this time. It's council and grants. Council and grants update from Mr. Featherstone, parks director. And I think what we would do, because I think we've got... We need some more information here before well, the council I making. I want to before making a general question before council makes some, you know, 
I want to clarify a general question. All right. With the, with the attorney, because I'm not sure what phrase I use, but all grants, I, I'm talking about all future grants. When, when future grants come up, do I always know that parks and transit can use the money any way they want, if, regardless of what we approve? No. Some of those grants would specifically deny them use elsewhere. They would have to be to a specific purpose. Some of those grants, in the past at least, had more bonds that required a bonding so that they were not misused. If they were misused, the bond company mm -hmm. would have to fork up. Uh, there are all types of grants. So to try to be specific to what do we want to do for all future ones, I don't know that there is a positive answer that anyone can give you exactly what you want to do with everyone from this point forward. Except to see the grant. Except possibly see the grant form each time. Okay. I would like to make a motion that the city attorney review the, the grants before they are submitted to advise the council on the consequences of the misuse of the grant. Tim, do you have experience in that line? I have some, yeah. And we do have, don't we have a certified grant person, isn't it? Is it Glenna? Glenna? Glenna is certified. Well, she's our one of the people, yeah. So we Glenna. have people that look at them, but if you want a legal opinion on them, you control the purse strings. That's the problem. It's always been the problem. <laughs> when you ask for work. Well, we got a motion. I don't know whether we got a second. A second? No second at this point. Okay, the motion dies for lack of a second. Um, that is something we can always ask for. I, yes, we can. Uh, I would like to go ahead and have, you know, uh, my understanding, and I think we're getting crosswise between what we read in the paper. Not, not saying that what's in the paper isn't always the absolute truth, and everybody should believe exactly what it says in the paper. Because we have such, <laughs> but I think we need to maybe. I've talked with Mr. Featherstone and Mr. Huss about this, uh, and I'd like for one of them, I don't care which one, to come up and give us uh, a little bit um, of where this grant is going and to try to help the council understand it. <laughs> Deep breath. <laughs> Okay, with all due respect to everybody in the room, I know more about this than everybody combined. And I have not had a conversation with a single person at this table about this yet. Could have saved you a lot of time. I can answer pretty much any question you have about this. And you are giving some very good advice to this table, by the way, based on my knowledge base. So I'm here to answer questions. And please, questions are okay. I'll start with the hard part, Bill. I'm curious as to why, okay, now according to the, the newspaper article, <laughs> okay, it says um, the Clear Springs School thing, that was what the original grant was for for the Correct. kids, to go from Clear Spring over to the playground without getting, Harmon Park to Clear Spring. Right, without getting run over by cars and what have you. Um, okay, it says here that they decided they didn't want to use it after looking and into the project a little more. What was deemed that, that to grant, be inappropriate that, or That thought? grant was written by Justin's predecessor. Mm -hmm. Okay, As it turned out, the requirements of that grant were an eight-foot wide paved asphalt, asphalt trail, which we thought was eight way wide? more than what we wanted. Yeah. Yeah, like for, this room? <laughs> For that, for that trail. So we decided that we could do what was adequate for that trail in-house at a much less cost, and that that grant, the best, the highest and best use of that grant was to redirect it to another project. And so we asked the state if we could do that. And they came back and said, yes, you can, you can redirect those funds to a fitness trail at the community center and or connecting the uh, sidewalk at the top of Planter Hill to the community center. Okay, now if the 
one of the problems or the biggest problem, whatever, was an eight-foot path, really? They wouldn't let you just cut it down to two feet or whatever normal thing is? No, they would not. They would let you redirect it, but you couldn't alter your footage? <laughs> That's weird. It's, I mean, I it's, 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 it, it's, that's it's weird. what you deal with sometimes when you're dealing with these government agencies. Okay, but, yeah, well, that's correct. But did not the Dairy Hollow thing also connect with Leatherwood in some way? A trail that goes to Leatherwood? No. Or that's going to that's, maybe? Well, ultimately, yes. Okay. I mean, that would be that, going to that would be part of a trail that uh, uh, you know eventually gets you to Leatherwood. But that part hasn't been done yet? No. And that well, part, part, of part of it's there. But, but the whole thing, okay. Yeah. Can I just do the history real quick? I'm just kind sure. of stepping on that. Same thing. Like Bill said, I, I came into this. This was an existing grant when I arrived here. Uh, the problems Bill just mentioned, the specs of this that, that were required to go through was be wider than a sidewalk coming through this area, which would get us into major drainage issues uh, along with this that we're going to address Private anyway. Property. Right. Um, <laughs> the second part of it also is, was which was not included in the original budget, was that these this grant requires uh, engineer drawings and plans for the whole thing. That was not in our budget, so that was $5,000 or greater, about 10% of our reserves at that point. Um, so combined with those, we decided this was not an appropriate grant for us. So we decided to turn it back. Now, I was as surprised as probably everybody here. They're like, well, you have something else do you want to use it for. That's not normally how that goes with the grant. It's fairly specific. This is a transportation alternatives program grant, which is sidewalks, safe routes to school, all that. Um, so we just we turned it back. We found other uh, uses for it. We knew about the sidewalk project. This was a year ago. We were deep in budget freeze and, and all that. We had some questions as far as reimbursement. The sidewalk project in front of Sparky's was going on. There's some money there and up and forth. I'll spare the details. Um, so we, can, we didn't know exactly what distance we could. Uh, again, with parks, we've Again, at this point, we're, we're, we were done with this grant, but we wanted someone to use it because we saw two projects that could poten potentially benefit the community and have turned it loose and that's where community centers come in and that's where the questions about the, the future of it um, i will say on this specific grant there is a caveat within it um, as far as if the um, conditions that would cause cost or repayment of those things one of those is if they fail to retain total direct control of the project throughout the life improvements and not in bold without prior approval from the department sell transfer otherwise abandon change intended use make significant alterations cease maintenance so there's there, if, if you came as there is an appeal process which in this grant hey this situation has changed this might be abandoned where it goes through now, again the, speaking Tim's point no slam dunks on that but there is a process and it is addressed in there so um, and then like I said so there, as far as parks goes that was the end of our dealings with this grant we had returned it off and we're happy to facilitate provide background information like this but you know as far as that goes this is when it passes through city and community center at that so there, there's, there's, there's one very important piece of information uh, that precludes a lot of this conversation and, and that is we can't build a trail until the city owns the land on which the trail is built or there's a permanent easement in place on the land in which the trail is built so Put that in your pipe and smoke on it. So, is the school district going to give you a say permanent? It, say it again. Is the school district giving you a permanent easement? They they would have to before we could build the trail. And have you talked? Use to them this about money it? to build the trail. Correct. And this is a reimbursement grant, by the way. You know, we don't get any of the money back if we don't spend it properly and, and go through all the proper channels. Have you talked to the school board about if they would give an easement? That conversation has been had. Yes. And their feelings? We, any idea? We. we we don't have an easement in place right now. That's that's the best way I can answer that. Okay, Mr. Wade. But we're not going to build the trail until we do. Right. Okay. Or or we own the property. And by the way, if the community center owns the property, we will gladly give an easement or deed over that property for the fitness trail. Okay. That won't be an issue. Okay, Mr. Williams. Looking at. Mr. Mitchell. That's I'm right. sorry. <laughs> I don't want sorry. to take his name or his position. <laughs> Council and grants, there's, based on what I just heard Justin say, or possibly Bill said it, I can't quite remember who said what, but you talk to these people with the grant and you have the ability to move it. So if you have the ability to move it, there's what work, what motion does Council need to make? You're moving it. 
you're you're doing everything. So have at it. I mean, I, I would agree with that, but there there is a very legitimate concern that came up at this table. Christy brought up a very a very real concern, yeah. and and that is having to repay this. Okay, that's that's a very real possibility. Okay, however, if you own or have a permanent easement mm -hmm. on which the trail is built, that kind of goes away, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my next question would be, why not the sidewalk? Right. From Planer Hill right. to the community center. Well, for, first of all, we are all for sidewalks. We need that sidewalk from Planer Hill to the community center mm -hmm. as, as much as anything in town as far mm -hmm. as trails and, and sidewalks go. Mm -hmm. and, and I walk that a lot. Mm -hmm. It's very dangerous. Um, but, uh, and I, I wear multiple hats. I'm just wearing this one tonight, but I wear multiple hats. We also need a fitness trail. We also need a community center. So we can argue all night ad nauseum as to which is more important. I, I contend that they're both important. But if we don't have an easement, I, and I, are you telling if me we, if we can If we can't get ownership of that or get an easement on that, then yeah, the trail will not be built and that money will be redirected again. How long will all this stay open? <laughs> I mean, this grant, I mean, in this grant is... It's open-ended. Now, when I say open-ended, that doesn't mean it can go on for months and certainly not years, okay? They want to, they want to see you making very good progress. And uh, we, can, we, can, we can get done what needs to be done within their time frame, whether that be build a trail at the community center or redirect it again to sidewalks. E we, either project yeah. was approved in that thing. It's a 2014 grant. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean that was a fifteen. It's applied in fourteen. So March 14, and March of twenty fifteen. This grant is again the transportation alternatives program. It's a federally funded. It's a big pot. It's there until that pot goes away. It's not been reallocated. Again, um, they're get highway transportation next year and a half, two years. We're we're not in danger of losing the money right now. So you don't need anything from this council. If, if you wanted to do sidewalks... I'd rather be walking the loop yeah. right now with my wife, quite frankly. With, with no offense to you guys. To, to answer your question, Christian, Ms. Kendrick, the, if, to do it, the sidewalks would require an allocation from the city for $80,000 with a $17,000 match. That's what would take the sidewalk. The community center is funding that build, so it's not city okay. money. So that, that's, that's the difference is to, oh. sidewalks would require... And, uh, and, and, a and there's a lot of information here, and we can talk as long as you want to. I'll give as much information as you want, but as of today... It's, it's possible, perhaps probable, that we already have enough money, to the city already has enough money to connect the trail at the top of Laner Hill to the community center with what it already has access to. We won't need any of these funds to make that mm -hmm. connection. We'll know, we'll know the answer to that definitively, hoping, hopefully in about a week. Mr. McCoy? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, they've already had turns. It's... I don't believe I have. Mr. Oh, McClung has not had his turn, turn yet. I'm sorry. If I'm mistaken. Okay. Oh, it's my turn is it? Uh, the, my question is Does the trail <coughs> around the community center, does it not have to be eight foot wide and engineered to it? Nope. It doesn't fall under the same guidelines? I can't explain that one to you, Terry, but no. We've been approved for a six foot concrete trail. Sidewalks are only four foot. Sometimes as low as three foot. It has to do based with the, my understanding is best place to, is that it was the eight, being an ADA trail, two wheelchairs would have to pass. That's generally a four foot section on either side. Gotcha. That, that's the three best foot, answer. Sure. Three foot. Three foot, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all we can do, you know, when you read these grants, and you're welcome to read these grants. I've read it so many times, and, and they're all a little bit different. There's a lot of gray area. A lot of things that aren't addressed or whatnot. All you can do is ask a lot of questions. You ask questions to the right people, and sometimes you get good answers. Sometimes you get ambiguous answers. Sometimes you get contradictory answers. But that's all you can rely on is the, is how they answer your questions. I would like to clarify something for you, and then I have a question, if that's okay. The reason that I'm concerned about city council and grants is not not because of this particular situation it's because in the future when right. we pass a resolution right. do we can we have any expectation that what we're passing will be done yeah i got that one okay well then why are you saying it's, everything's okay let's move on 
understand. Well, if you trust your if you trust your parks commission to spend that money wisely, and if that includes redirecting the money for very good reasons, then there's no need for oversight by your mayor. Otherwise, maybe you need oversight. I, I didn't get to my question. You started out saying that uh, that the previous uh, parks commissioner had written this grant and it had the parks director. Parks director had the eight foot all that stuff in it and the engineering requirements and all that stuff. But you two are the ones that brought the grant to city council for the resolution. That, that wasn't the previous. To redirect. No. That never came to council. We never I think they brought 691. That's a separate, separate grant. That's, you're talking about the Trails for Life grant. That's a, that's a completely different grant. We weren't awarded that grant. The Dairy Hollow yeah. Trail which came to city council on the ninth day of March, 2015. That was, was you and, and just, and it wasn't Justin, no, but was it No, you? Justin wasn't here. Where, you that, was, that was Bruce. Okay. Right. And I'm not, I don't want to blame that on Bruce. Right. I don't, don't, don't take that the wrong way. Yeah. You know, that, that, the, the requirements they imposed on us on that trail ended up being something different than we thought they were going to be. And they were excessive for what we, what we thought needed to, take place on that connection so we decided that we can get that done in-house uh -huh. what needs to be done relatively inexpensively and the best use of that money was to redirect it and the state agreed with that Ms. Kendrick. I would point out that this resolution states that the purpose is to develop or improve Dairy Hollow Trail and that I think it is important that com comes back to council because of the 20% local match and I, I think when I wasn't here when this was passed, mm -hmm. but I, I would guess that the uh, council would think that it would be important. And obviously, they had an in mind at that time where the 20% local <coughs> match was coming. But if they move it, mm -hmm. then the local match may be coming from someplace else. So I think it is important for it to come back to council to review that one thing, if nothing else. Mr. Mitchell. Okay, so. Parks can redirect based on the grant, which we wouldn't need to take any action. And I understood you were talking about the future. I was kind of referring to this grant, like, well, we're. But now Christie's brought up a very interesting point. The ordinance that we drafted through here was very specific. Resolution. So the re resolution. Oh, resolution. Yeah, was very specific to that. So we do, we would it seems like we would have to deal with that resolution by changing it to match what Parks is capable of doing based on what the people that wrote and were given the grant said they could do. Okay, it's a point of clarity just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, the Dairy Hollow Trail, when it's you know it's an eighty twenty grant. The twenty percent was coming out of Parks. Okay, now it's not coming out of Parks. Parks is not putting a dime in the project in the fitness trail. That money's all being privately raised. So then we need to just and rescind this. Well, my, my, I would think it would need to, need to be amended. Uh, we can't just we withdraw can, it? We can withdraw it and repass it. Yeah. Well, in, in my point, uh, the specific with the Dairy Hollow Trail is that, you know, that was, it was such an important thing that we went to great lengths to swap property out and months and months getting all that worked out and surveyed out and waiting on this and waiting on that and it was so critical and so important and now it's not so if it's that important you're still willing to do it and spend the money and do it and, I, and I'll get my blessing it's still on the important other. to us too Terry and we're the ones doing all the work by the way just for, for whatever that's worth but that that Dairy Hollow Trail is still an important trail that's going to get built that, that's still on. Uh, nothing's changed as far as the, the construction well, of that. Except it hasn't that. happened, right? It hasn't happened. Well, there's there's a couple of a few other grants that'll land in the next week. We'll know a little better what the, the big picture is. But that is still happening. That money is already earmarked. That is budgeted for this year from uh, carryover from the last year. The matching funds, and that will be constructed. We're also working with Public Works on that project. This project's going to do about eight culverts. It's going to do a whole bunch to help drainage on that street. And again, that allows us this flexibility without that's being right. bound by this entire process. That's why we chose to not do it through this grant. And I believe it'll actually be less than what our matching amount would have been for this original grant to, put, to get this section done. So, so it, it's, still, it's still higher than part well, of the that's, entire... That's just my, yeah. my whole concern about this is that 
we jumped through so many hoops and it took so long and the expectations weren't for it to happen and now it's just blown off and something else and, and, and that's in, in our in our sight because we don't know what your plans are. Sure, and that, but, I don't know that you're going to that you're going to break ground on it next week. I don't I, know I that. My, the, my, my yeah. telephone number yeah. and email is on the city website. Well, now, why should I have to call you and ask you that though? Why wouldn't you, right, Mr. Mitchell? A question for the attorney: What do we need to do with this resolution that says Dairy Hollow? I don't think you need to do anything because you didn't actually approve any money. As he said, the money was to be a match from Parks' money. Had you moved money around in your budget, uh -huh. you might want to reallocate that money or withdraw its allocation. I'm not worried about that. But since you did not allocate money, so that resolution then has no meaning? That resolution was basically in support of what they asked you to do. Which is not happening. Which they now tell you they're getting ready to build some other trail and they're going to also finish the Dairy Hollow project in the manner that they expect will be satisfactory. So you don't want us to rescind that resolution, just let it hang out there? That resolution doesn't approve money. Okay. If you, if you want to withdraw your approval of them seeking the original grant, no, you can do, do that. that but, the, but the money that's approved in there is not really you approving money. They told you at the time that they were borrowing, or that the money would come from their revenue stream. Is that what it says in there? I don't remember. Your attorney's giving you good advice. <laughs> to your advantage. Okay, so well, yeah. <laughs> well, at this point, it would but be to the, agree with me. Oh. At, at this point, it would actually be to the, the entire city and the parks department's advantage if what Mr. Featherstone is telling you comes to fruition, that it'll all be privately funded if this yeah. exercise trail is made then the money is not coming out of your budget that you control nor out of the parks as revenue stream it'll be coming completely all private if, it, if it's built money. the city is going to get a, a fitness trail an exercise trail a cardio trail whatever you want to call it it's going to get it at no cost to the city okay so now okay <laughs> so in a nutshell basically what we're saying is Resolution 656, the uh, Jerry Hollow one, that one has been reassigned to the trail at the community center. Resolution number 691 failed. You did not get approved for that one, so that one we can totally ignore in that regard. The city isn't putting out any money. If any money goes out, it'll be from parks. The biggest thing that 2080 no, thing. No, no, whoa, whoa. It'll be from the community center. Parks, community oh, okay, center, two okay. different things. Yeah. The community, community center. Community center's writing all the checks. So that's the private you're talking about. Right. Okay. So basically what it comes down to is let's get that stupid easement. <laughs> well, it's right. not going to be built if we don't. But I mean, but that's what I mean. Yeah. Isn't, that, that's, I mean that's just, isn't that the final line? It's, you don't build the trail and then go get your easement. If we don't get the easement, it's not going to be built. That money's not going to be isn't spent. Isn't that the final line? We've got to get that easement so the trail can be built. Isn't we, that we've the got bottom to own line? The, we've got to own the property or have an easement, a permanent easement on the property. Okay, so talks have been at some point talked. Do they need to be talked more or have assistance in talking? Wow, that's a loaded question there. <laughs> that's their, yeah, and and that's their deal. Yeah, that's their deal. It is. That, but that's. I, I wish I wish it wasn't, but it is. Yeah, that's. <laughs> but that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, Mr. McClellan. So yeah, if, if you're if you're if you I don't know I'm reading between the lines here, Mickey. Okay, but if, if you're asking me if that's a done deal, if we can definitely 100% get that easement or or get ownership in time way. before we lose this money or whatnot, I can't tell you yes. No, I was looking at it the other way. Have they shut you down? They have not. Okay, that's what I wanted. Personally, you know, I, I understand what Bill's, or it's not Bill, I'm getting as bad as you are, Mayor, is what <laughs> Bob says. I understand what he's talking about. And, uh, but, but then, but in reference to this specific uh, resolution, I mean, if Parks is going to go ahead and do, and I take the, both these men at their word, if, if they say they're going to do Dairy Hall, then I'm satisfied. That it'll get done and and within a reasonable length of time. 
And, and I also believe that when they say no, no stone will get turned until there is a permanent easement or some parks have some kind of ownership given to the city, and, and I stress the word given to the city, uh, so I, I have no problem with, I mean, I don't have any problem with, with them doing that trail off that grant because of that, it has that caveat that must be met, must be met. Ms. Adamson, did you have your hand up? I just had a curious question. Is If you're building a sidewalk, does public works assist in the building of the sidewalk? Do you, do you pay public works to help you build sidewalks? It, the, the fitness trail that's on the school property that's currently the community center, public works will not be involved okay. in that, except possibly in the uh, 62 right-of-way on the, the 62 yeah. side of the community center. That's okay? what, because you, yeah. you're talking about building a sidewalk from Planer Hill to the community center. That's that, public works. Okay. That's all but public you works. would be getting the grant money for that? No. 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 Okay. That's, separate, that's a separate all grant. Okay. That's, that's something we've been on. That's an even older. Got you know, it's, it's a, it's a. This is a little too simplistic, but but city builds sidewalk and right. parks builds trail. <laughs> okay, Mr. McClung brought up the, the land swap, which stirred my memory. I'm an older man. You were <laughs> coming to council about the land swap for the exchange of property. Had you not read that grant? That the previous commissioner had We'd already just, I'd already turned that grant back. It was in kind of the limbo at that point. That whenever this, whenever we were going through the easement process, we'd already decided to turn that grant back. What I'd, grant? This the grant. Original one from Dairy. That we're talking Holly. about. <laughs> well, we, we, are we, we the Dairy Hollow, the money to be used for Dairy Hollow. We're talking about the Dairy Hollow easements. Yeah. When we were talking about that, is that correct? I'll make sure I'm. Yeah. I don't think any of us were aware of that. Yeah. Why would we approve the resolution, and, and why would we have paid it? That, that resolution was done a year before I got here. Well, why, why would we have approved the land swap if you were still building the trail? Whether we're getting a grant for it well, or paying for it ourselves, we're still building a trail. We still need the easement. All, all the work that's been done to build the Dairy Hollow Trail still applies. Whether this grant pays for it or we do it in-house or get another grant to do it, all that work, all that easement work and everything, that all still applies. Because we want that trail built. That's an important trail. I don't, I, I, you know, if we could survey council, and I don't want to, I guarantee you that everybody on council thought when you, we were trading this land, we were talking about this grant money. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure, but I mean, it, well, sure. I, I apologize for, it's, it's, Parks money coming out, which way Parks was spending the money on that, and I mean, I, I apologize if that wasn't conveyed. I mean, it, it, as far as that, the easement and the securing that land, it, it, to me, it doesn't really have bearing what the financial status of it is. It's at the that's a construction process. It certainly did to us, and it does to us because, you know, that was a part of the whole package deal. When 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 the now you weren't here, but when when that when that resolution was passed. I mean, that was all discussed, you know, at the beginning back then that there was probably going to have to be something done. And it was a long process getting that land. And we, you know, it's, we always thought the grant was going right there. But, it, but it's still going to work yeah. out. The, the, the end, re well, end result's the same. Not, yeah. I understand yeah. that. I'm, I'm taking... The trail hasn't changed other than it's not going to be eight-foot asphalt. It's going to go in the same place, but it's going to be more in the line of like a six a six-foot semi-permeable type trail. That's fine. I'd just yeah. like to see it done. And if we appreciate that. It will be. Because it, it will be. It needs to be done. It's we will and, be watching. And it's there's a whole <laughs> lot more trail that's going to be built too. Mr. Mitchell. So I'm going to go back to that question. Based on the topic that we have here, council and grants, based on the fact that parks can move that around, they're still going to build Dairy Hollow and all that. Is there really anything that council needs, the legal question, is there anything that we need to do? Or, I mean, we don't have a part in this, really, other than this nice, big, long discussion we've had. Do we? As to what is going on in this particular instance? Is there anything we're supposed to do with this? I don't this? know anything you need to do in this Thank instance. You. Okay. You may want to look at future ones in a different manner, but mm -hmm. as far as current one, no. Okay. I'm not making a suggestion that you make any changes just to let it go I have one more question then I'm done 
because the mayor brought up that, you know, you can't trust newspapers. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say you can't trust them. Well, it's going to be the paper next week. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't, don't mean, misquote me on that. I, I, I want to ask about this because according to this newspaper article, you spoke to your commission about this swapping of money and stuff. And... Uh, one, your, one of your commissioners, Stephen Foster, asked you if the city council has to approve this. And according to the newspaper, your response was that uh, I'm not aware of any oversight that city council has. They had to approve the application for the grant. It does go through the city, and they are aware of everything I told you. I just told you. I was not aware of it. I don't know who else. I think was. he's referring to the city being the mayor, the CEO. And I was aware that the grant was being being transferred from Derry Hollow to up on top of the hill. Well, Mr. Foster's question was, does the city council have to approve the commission's decision? And according to our city attorney, no. Well, I'm just wondering. Mr. Foster was correct. But I think according yeah. to the Mr. city Foster, attorney, Mr. Foster was correct. Mr. Foster no, asked the he was city correct. Mr. Foster asked the city council have to approve our, this, and his answer was, they are aware of everything I have told you. told you. Again, I'm, I thought you said the city, not the city council. His question was, you asked if the Eureka Springs City Council has to approve the commission's decision, and Featherstone said he didn't think so. Okay, that is, uh, no, stop wait, right there. No. Th now, he's correct. Right. According to the city attorney. But okay. he went on and told his commission, which voted to change the money, he that told the city that they are aware of everything I just I thought told. you said the city was aware. No. He says it, the, the question was okay. about well. city council. Well, there's absolutely no way I was misquoted in the paper because yeah. that just didn't happen. <laughs> right, Nikki and Samantha? Now, I can tell you what my intent was in answering that, and maybe I didn't listen to Stephen well enough, yeah. and maybe I didn't answer well enough, okay? But the intent of that was that I had spoken with the mayor, just as he said. Okay? And he had approved it. Well, but um, I'm not going to speak for the mayor. He no. was aware. The mayor was aware of, of uh, what we were considering and was aware of various directions this could take. Okay. We all heard it a long time ago. I mean, this is not, what you're telling us right now is not new news, or what was in that paper was it new news that you're wanting to, to swap it out. The only reason it's here now is because it's just all come to light. I mean, it, in, in, in Bob's, you know, because of his concern of how the, the grant resolutions are, are done and, and that. Uh, but, but it's always been a concern of mine. Uh, you know, because I thought, well, you know, we, we went through all these things that, like I say, to do Dairy Hall, and it, and it wasn't happening. And it I, was just I, like it was being forgot about. No, not at all. Well, okay, not at all. but that was never yeah. said. It's like, okay, well, we're pulling the money I, off this for our, our apologies for not better informing you about that. Okay, we'll, we'll take that one. We'll own that one. Okay, that trail is going to get built. Okay. Hopefully this fitness trail gets built, and hopefully a whole heck of a lot more trail gets built. And we're having to be very creative in how we get it built because you guys aren't writing us any checks, and money is not easy to come by. That's right. That's okay. Right. All right. And, and also, and I'll go through here too. Um, when when this was approached to my office, I was aware of it, but he I was also as was just informed. Dairy Hollow Trail is still going to be built. So I didn't see a problem. I didn't know why, you know, any reason to bring that up. It's still going to be built. We're having a sidewalk from Planer Hill to the school. We don't think that's going to, the grant that we have from the highway department, separate grant that we've been working on for, I don't know how many years, six years maybe, uh, will not extend all the way to the school. We have a large gully, valley, that we've got to have been looking at trying to figure out how much money that's going to cost to get across. This is right across from the transit building. The motel, nothing fancy, yeah. right in there. There's a big gully right in there. So we got to do something there that's going to cost a lot of money to get the sidewalk there. We don't know how far more we're going to go. The conversations I had with Bill and them was we can use whatever we're going to try to tie it in with this grant 
all of it with any extra money through the fitness trail, so we'll have one complete road route. That's ultimately, I think, what all the city wanted was a complete route with a sidewalk and a trailhead. My fault for not bringing it to the council and saying, "Here's here's what we're doing now." Uh, with parks, the same thing. We should maybe we should have brought this up to you, but I didn't see that until it came up in, as in the paper and. Uh, Mr. Thomas brought it up. So uh, here we are. He's telling you the truth. I mean, that's, that's just the way it happened. Maybe in the future, an email or something. I don't know. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, we're guilty of not uh, uh, probably <laughs> informing everybody as well as we should. But you can probably understand that it's easy for that to happen when you've got more stuff to get done than you have time to get it done. But our apologies, and we'll do better in the future about communication. We can do that, but this <laughs> this is all going to work out, or it may not work out at all. Okay, again, you know, there's a lot of concern about the community center. Will it happen? Will it not happen? Well, this trail is not, regardless of what happens with that, this trail is not going to be built unless it's going to be there forever for city use, open for public use. Now, to get built. Now, the, the other option is if for some reason we don't get the lease in, in the easement on the grant, we can still use this money to finish up the sidewalks on Planer Hill. Unfortunately, it's going to cost us, you know, we're going to have to match. I optimistic than your mayor. We're going to have to match that money. Or Gary Hollow could be down there again, too. No? Well, I don't think we want to go to that. I don't want a, an eight foot wide. Concrete, no, especially surface. not no. down there. Good Lord. You know, I mean, if we're going to do, we're really, up, up, and this is a separate type of grant. Too. We might, we might, uh, so. you know, no, we're going to get that trail built before we have any time to. And it's more important for me to get the Planer Hill finished. Well, and that's fine, but you, okay. you can say take one lesson out of this whole conversation. Council does pay attention to detail. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just, I was going to say they read the newspapers too. <laughs> Better to than I do. Attention to what paper? <laughs> Which paper? Now, what paper was that in? <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right. Not true. Anyway. Any further discussion? All right. I don't think so. Thank you guys for right. showing Thanks up. For you. Oh, um, Lovely. All right, well, that brings us up to... Uh, saw that we didn't need to do anything. No, we had a good discussion about detail. Yes, we did. We had yeah. a very good uh, discussion. And we won't all right, again. agenda <laughs> setting. I think if we are not going to make a decision about the sites until October, we should put it on the agenda to discuss at the next meeting. For, it's going to be on the agenda for October. You want you mean... Well, we may want to discuss it before then yeah. well, as well. Oh, well, give her a second or something. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear. I suggested that we discuss the sites in the next meeting, even if we're not going to make a decision until October. You just want it on there in case we want to discuss it. Yes. Well, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, he's Butch, the, Mr. Mayor should have something from the that other possibility so hopefully yeah all right i'd like to hear that before we make a decision okay. that could be an option. Mm -hmm. uh, yes sir uh we also bring the auditorium back based on the when the move will take place and all that good stuff does that need to come or are we just no gonna we're going to be moving by next next council meeting i think our plan next council meeting will be at the know. auditorium <laughs> never mind okay uh, what was that clarifying comment the next meeting will be at the auditorium. Thank you. All right. Any further? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do we want to revisit Ordinance 2179 and clean that up the way it should have been? Which one is that? Uh, that's the one about multiple commission seats and the voting mm -hmm. part and stuff like that. Where, co that where council members can cover temporarily is the way it was supposed to have been written. Uh-huh temporarily cover until they get seats filled. Why don't you uh, write me something, Mickey, that you're thinking and let me look at it and talk to Tim about it. Okay. And if it's something yeah, I think I'll bring it up. Years, so. okay. 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 Anybody else? Mm, 
All right. Uh, council comments. Which side first? Peg. <laughs> you served to hear last time. It's their turn. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I already Go said. right ahead. All right. Did she become chair? <laughs> I made a comment. It's and council your wife comments. My baby opinion would be. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, I'll do Come it. Come on, I'll children. Uh, no, no, I've already did my little mini Mickey rant about my topic. I'm going to leave it alone. Thank you, David. <laughs> I have no comments. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> if you weren't the mayor, I'd <laughs> I know we'd arm uh, The uh, <laughs> and you're probably going to make reference to this anyway. But this Friday or Saturday is our jazz, jazz weekend. It'll be good music at the park, free Friday and Saturday. And you may have a list of who's playing. No, I don't. Uh, Friday evening, and and then Saturday afternoon. Uh, and then there's a, a, a program at uh, uh, at the what I can't remember what you call it. At, yeah, upstairs at the grotto. Got that. Uh, and there's still tickets available. Uh, it's going to be first class. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it, and hope to see all of you there. Thank you, Bob. No comment, Mickey. Um. This is 9-11. It's been hard, God, for a whole week for me. My Marine son <coughs> had been stationed in New York, not too far from the World Trade Center, and had literally just driven by like within 20 minutes of the first plane crash <coughs> into the building. On his way to um, one of the other bases on the coast, he got was told to go straight to the first one in Virginia, and there they were locked up for two weeks. Everybody in the military world, because we didn't know at that time if they were going after America or military or what. And it was really rough. It took three days to be able to finally hear from them. So that's always been hard for me and anybody in the military having to do with the military. And then one year ago today at 9-11, it's when my SUV got totaled by a Hummer doing 70. Good grief, what a perfect day, except I was too stubborn and I walked away. So it's got a lot of meaning, but this has been a very incredible incident for America and what, what I find really touching in some ways bizarre is a lot of foreign countries do not understand how and why we remember these things. They're absolutely astounded. A year later, they expect us to just forget <coughs> about it. I'm sorry, 9-11 was an attack on every mother's child, you know? But foreign countries think that it's done, it's over, forget it, go on to the next thing. I, No, I will always remember this day. I don't know about everybody else, but I know I will. That's it. Thank you, thank you. I was just going to mention that you can get a schedule of events for Jazz Eureka at jazzeureka.org slash schedule dash of dash events. Thank you. That's too much. I'm sorry I interrupted you. I'm giving autumn splendor to Bob. I don't think I've given you any flowers. No, I think you haven't. You, no, I Maybe haven't. You I wanted you. All of them now are autumn splendor. I anyway. was hoping you never would. <laughs> I will accept that. Anyway, nation. people are asking for a minute. But we find that that is very interesting. <laughs> it, is very, it was particularly interesting. Anyway, um, I did want to say I've got friends in Florida I have and relatives, and I have relatives in Texas in the path of these hurricanes, and I just cannot imagine what they're going through. But my blessings go out to them, and um, I also wanted to thank you for the uh, the drawings and all of that for the, uh, the the buildings that we're looking at. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think it is important, uh, as Peg said, uh, to keep the people in Florida and Texas in our thoughts and prayers. Um, I also have relatives in both places, and, and down in Tampa especially. Mm. Uh, and I know, well, on both, both coasts, uh, and there's thousands of people without electricity, and that this time of night it's it's scary. Um, I don't care where you are or anything else, and uh, so keep them in our thoughts. 
because up here in the Ozarks, we're experiencing some wonderful time, wonderful weather. Um, and for the next five, six days, seven days, from the uh, today through the 16th, um, I guess the next Saturday, you're liable to see a lot of scooters. It's going to be scooting in the Ozarks. Uh, so that's what this is all about. So pay attention. People who are out driving, uh, those little scooters are not... They don't make a lot of noise, and you may not see them because they're small, but they're going to be all around the town. Um, on the 14th, um, we're actually starting, I guess, uh, Jazz Week. Uh, we're going to have the Roaring Twenties Jazz Festival party uh, from 7 to 9 at the Crescent Hotel. Uh, and then, as Mr. McClone said, both sa Saturday, Friday, and Saturday, the 15th and 16th, uh, and Jazz in the Park. Fury concert uh, on the 15th it'll be from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah. in the Basin Park and then on the 16th will be from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, our biggest problem this weekend would have a lot of activities going on the um, 16th we're going to have Veronica Swift in the Arkansas Jazz Society at the Grotto upstairs and she is incredible she just um, I mean, she will make your makes my hair stand on end just to listen to her. She's so wonderful. Uh, and then that evening, also down in the auditorium, we're going to have the Eureka of Variety Experience from eight to ten. Um, I don't know how we can manage to do them all, but I'm going to try. Um, and then, of course, uh, the following weekend, uh, we're going to have the uh, bikes and blues and barbecues. It's going to be in town, so it's going to be uh, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, up at Pine Mountain Village. Uh, also, things going on at the Cat House. And then on the 23rd, uh, from 3 to 5, this is always fun. We're going to have dancing in the park. So if you have never seen it, it's, it's uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, people are doing a great job on that. And that's all that I have. So Motion to adjourn. Good second. <laughs> Thank you. I all guess right. there's a second. Yes. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Right. Any opposed? Okay, thank you guys very much. Um, <laughs> I think it was